<laughs> yeah, you can ask me later what cognitive systems engineering is. <laughs> so my name is Marissa Grayson, and today, I in five minutes, I want to reframe how you think about incident response in DevOps, particularly because there's someone or something that you're leaving out of the room. Your automated tools are fellow responders. They actually have models and thoughts in their own particular way. And when we do postmortems, we focus primarily on the people-driven changes. So I'm not talking about automated tools like you know, the future or AI, but your tools do react. They do adapt and respond, very similar to how we do. So we have to think of them as cognitive agents particularly how they respond to stress or saturation. Just like in a sponge, you can absorb so much that you cannot respond anymore. And there's four different types of responses that you typically see in this reaction. So response one, shedding load. We see this in dropped requests. People can drop work as well, but that's often with other ramifications. Response two is reducing thoroughness. So this can be seen as increased latency or decreased performance in certain components. Basically, they cannot handle things at the normal rate, so they have to slow it down in a way. Third response is recruiting resources. So we can see this in terms of spinning up new virtual boxes or opening up new connections. People often do this by recruiting new expertise into the situation to ask for help. And then the last response is shifting work in time. See this in asynchronous threading or even timeouts, where you're pushing the current demands into a future state that you can handle it. So these four different types of responses are seen both in people and in technology. So they're also tactical and strategic. Tactical meaning immediate relief or strategic looking a little bit long term to try and manage resources. So with this framework, we can look at incidents as opportunities to actually understand our automated tools better. Because it's so much easier to actually think of the automated tools as reacting in different ways. And that's why we're so interested in DevOps as a unique opportunity, because both technology and people responding to anomalies. So this is from the Stella report that you can find later. But before you take this new world view out into the world, there are a few challenges, I have to admit, to working with automation. So the first one is strange loops. <laughs> so this is actually when a component provides a function that relies on its own functionality. Basically, for something to work, it has to actually work first. And it can be a very strange loop. Masking is another challenge, where we see that one, um, one symptom is masking or hiding another. And you see this all the time with error messages in one place far from their, from their origin, which goes into another issue, concurrent issues, where multiple things might be going on that may or may not be connected. And it's very hard to tell. And then the last issue I'm gonna mention is measure limitations. You are what you eat, or in this case, what you code. So error messages are only giving you a small portion of the information and a very limited context to be able to figure out what's actually going on. So in this case, we need new perspectives, contrasting perspectives when we're looking into systems. Sometimes the data that you need to figure out a problem is right around a corner that you don't have any eyes or ears on, but you still need to know. And so there's another issue that you have of generating hypotheses. You share information in chat logs to try and mitigate problems. And companies like IBM, New Relic, Netflix are trying to extract those ideas. Problem that my main point is this. Automation is not a person, but the processes you build help you to mitigate the risk of overload. And so they need to be part of the conversation. Challenge you all, if you want to learn more about why I think saturation is such an important issue, go to this link. Look up this paper. 
and find out a little bit more about how you can reframe the way you think of your own system. Thank you.